Hey everyone, I'm Nathan. Well, you did it, folks. You liked the cowboy video. You commented on the cowboy video. So guess what? We're doing it again, but slightly different. So get ready for every single Drawfee Frankenstein's monster, or just Frankenstein, because at least 50% of the Drawfee Frankenstein characters are both Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster rolled into one. Mostly, this is just an excuse to draw fan favorite Stein, non-binary icon, but I did some digging and I discovered there are five Frankenstein slash Frankenstein's monsters characters made by Drawfee. Those are just the ones I could find. If you find ones that I missed, <laughs> let me know in the comments below. And with that, let's get into the video. So when I decided I wanted to draw fan art of Stein, the first thing I knew is that I didn't want to do a laboratory. <laughs> I didn't want to draw any like beakers or test tubes or chemicals, mad scientist lair. So this is Stein goes to the carnival. We've got vintage merry-go-rounds. We got clowns. We got concession stands, fun prizes, all those things. I just wanted to give Stein a really fun day out at the fair. I sketch in all of the figures that are gonna be here in red, which brings me to figure number one, Frankenstein Kaiju, who debuted in Artist Draw Godzilla Kaiju that they've never seen. It's an older video. This is also my first Nathan from Drawfee character that I'm doing on the program. The only thing that I changed is I made him normal size instead of Kaiju sized, and I did kind of make him a delf. But Nathan Drawfee actually made Frankenstein Kaiju a tailor, which I just thought was such an interesting occupation for a monster to have. So this is my headcanon. Stein being the original scientist who's into body modifications and Frankensteining themselves out, got lonely and wanted to make themselves parents. So they made Frankenstein Kaiju as their dad. And they made him be a tailor so that he's really good at making clothes. A person who does lots of body modifications is going to need a lot of different outfits. Stein's gonna need shirts with three different sleeves for her arms to come out of, different sizes, different measurements different occasions. And now their father is going to be able to make all those clothes for them. And yes, he has a dumpy because Nathan Yaffe made him dummy thick. It's not my fault. I had to do it. Figure two, Crystal Thomas, 94, attractive surgeon. Crystals from the artist draw randomly generated characters video. These names, y'all, you're killing me. You're really killing me. She's in many ways a Stein prototype. Jacob drew her way before Stein in a video. And, but this is sort of where the inception of the idea of a surgeon who does body modifications really took hold in his subconscious, which later blossomed into Stein in the redesigning classic movie monsters video. So because of that, and the fact that she's 94 years old, I was like, oh my gosh, what if she was Stein's grandmother, who was like a surgeon in World War II or something, and also a spy? I imagine that Stein was probably an orphan under like tragic circumstances, and that Crystal maybe didn't even know that she had a granddaughter. If this were a TV show, I feel like this would be the main relationship that the story focuses on. Sort of like spy family vibes? So when Crystal dies tragically in the middle of a mission, and her body is recovered and eventually brought back to Stein. <laughs> They bring her back to life, but make her younger. Because if she's been kicking bad guy spy ass at the age of 94, she definitely needs some new joints. We need to help her out. Crystal is also madly in love with Frankenstein Kaiju, and their dynamic is giving very Morticia and Gomez. Ooh, we love it. So I drew them in a little romantic positioning with Frankenstein Kaiju measuring Crystal, because while they were riding on the merry-go-round, an accident happened, and she ripped her pants. Oh no. I also gave crystal gray streaks to reflect her age and also to reference the Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> See what I did there? Which brings us to the subject matter of this piece, the brainiac of the hour, Stein themselves. I drew Stein rolling their eyes because they're like, ugh, get a room, mom and dad. But also at the same time, it's sort of like, uh, you kids, because there's that weird dynamic of creating these parents for yourself to be taken care of. But also since you created them, you're somewhat responsible for them. And in some ways, you're the parent or creator. I just think that's really interesting. I drew them with their body modifications of the giant paw and the spindly long fingered claw hand. That way they can hold 
all of the carnival food, all of the snacks, all of the prizes and toys won in combat. No, I'm kidding, not combat. In carnival games, obviously. Why would there be combat at a fair? Here I'm adjusting the bolt on their neck, and then I'm gonna clean up the line art. And now I'm just drawing all of the goodies in their hands. In the purple claw hand, I really wanted to draw a bunch of candy and sweets to eat, but I did this thing where I kind of made them in the shape of a heart. So if you just glanced at the image and you don't look too closely, it almost looks like Stein has a severed part in their hands very casually. But when you look closer, it's just candy. And in the paw, I drew lots of plushes because it's larger and it would be able to carry all of the stuffed trophies from Skee-Ball or Shoot the Duck with the Water. I, I don't know carnival games. But yeah, I just draw some random, completely unintentional, generic non-specific plushes that aren't referencing anything in particular. Just doodles. Piss boy. Jacob boy. And then I finish up Stein with some lighting and shadows like always. And now I get to say something I've never said before, but um, it's that time, delete your art. <laughs> I wasn't happy with Crystal's face. It was like way smaller than both Stein's and Frankenstein's kaiju. Also, while we're on the subject, my headcanon is that Frankenstein kaiju in my AU, I'm naming him Alphonse after Alphonse Frankenstein. That's right, from Mary Shelley's original novel, Alphonse Frankenstein's, Victor Frankenstein's dad. And Alphonse is just a really good name. Oh, Metal Alchemist. And here I'm adding some non-Franken characters because I wanted to show that in the world there are normal people. And since I said it in a fair, I was like, there needs to be a clown and the clown needs to be handing like a small child a balloon. And the only small child I could think of was Ogilvy. Um, Ogilvy is from Draw Detectives. If you don't know what Draw Detectives is, hello, uh, go watch the series on the Drawfee main channel. Ogilvy is a wonderful NPC played by Julia Lepetit. Um, I just loved the idea of Ogilvy being like, ah, get away from me, to a clown. Um, yeah, the clown is from artists draw dark stock photos based on their description. Karina drew the clown that Julia was describing. I watched that video in my car <laughs> during like a 15 minute break at my part-time job and oh my gosh. I just remember laughing so hard when that episode premiered. I love how my rendition of the clown came out. I love how long his face is. He just has this weird fey, fairy, fey wild feeling that I can't quite shake but I like it a lot. And then with Ogilvy, there was a lot of push and pull for how stylized to keep him because obviously the draw detective style is so distinct that it would have kind of looked odd I feel like in this context so I wanted to humanize him a little bit and still have him looking like a little boy and not like Jimmy Neutron it's very difficult and here we have Dave Dave is a Frankenstein's monster who I believe appeared on a stream but I cannot for the life of me find what stream Dave appeared in it might have been a beans all I can find is this image on Know Your Meme, and I have a vague memory of watching, I think, Karina draw this? Maybe not, but it, it was like a quick one, I feel like. I could be totally off base here, so if anyone knows about Dave, let me know. I imagine Dave was either a first draft of Alphonse, but too young, so Stein kept him around as an older brother. But yeah, he's like really running around this corner, and he's so beat up, like he's missing part of his arm, his guts are showing, his clothes are ripped to shreds, and he almost seems like he's heading towards Stein to warn them about something something that's happening in this park. When researching for this video, I came across this image of Thickner Frankenstein, who appears to be a curvaceous female version of Victor Frankenstein. And so I interpreted her as like akin to vampire hunters, like a Frankenstein hunter. Yeah, she definitely just roughed up Dave, who barely was able to escape. And now she's coming for Stein's entire family. And y'all, it's about to be a showdown and it's gonna be on. <laughs> I really want to capture the sense of danger by adding the blood and then how the axe is just barely shown. Ooh, it's so sinister. I love it. And now we're doing the background and you understand the scary um, context of this video. Yeah, so I didn't intend to make this be the moment right before an epic battle <laughs> with a lot of high stakes and danger and intrigue, but uh, 
that's just who I am. I had to do it as soon as I found the characters. They spoke to me. So rest assured, I'm sure Stein will come out on top. And even if it's one of those times where the hero does lose, Ogilvy is safe. He's definitely going to be okay. He's, <laughs> after all, he's not a Frankenstein's monster. So he's going to be just fine. It's funny because when I first started this drawing, I just wanted to draw Stein, the other Frankenstein characters that I would find, maybe some that I didn't know about. But I absolutely love the mood once you see the finished piece. I really had so much fun doing all of the ornamentation, like the faux gold accenting on the top of the merry-go-round and on the concession stand. That was the initial image in my head with Stein holding all of these goodies in their really big hands and just the top of the merry-go-round where I wanted to paint this cute little fairy steamboat on a river. And who would have thought we would have ended with murder? Well, I guess no one's murdered. Now I'm just adding more textures to the different types of stone and brick, and I'm about to go in and do my shadows before I hit it with the good, good lighting. I go to town on the adjustment layers one more time just to really get the time of day, and then we're good to go. And with that, this is the finished piece. This one came out like a dream. I love how crumbly and textured the background is. And yes, it was not just an accident that happened on the merry-go-round. No, no, no. It was definitely a trap meant to kill Crystal, but the Stein family, they just interpreted it as a silly little accident. Ooh, ooh. What do you think of my head cannons in this AU where Stein builds a whole Franken family? Do you think Alphonse Frankenstein Kaiju is a Dilf with a Dumpy that you want to let me know in the comments below? And if you liked this video, hey, like, subscribe. And if you really want to support the channel, check me out on Patreon. That's right. The end credits are here. Special thanks to Gay Jarris Melon. Tuesday Anyways, and Tuppence Pies. A round of applause to y'all. You are the coolest cats in town. Thank you so much. It's because of you that this channel is possible and that I can keep showing the world my art. So thank you so much for being my very first patrons. I'm not gonna get emotional. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. As always, my name is Nathan. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday, and I'll see you soon. Bye.